Okay, uh, shall we get started? Uh, okay, the uh, fourth speaker today is uh, Jun Izawa, and uh, his title of the talk is Meta Learning Structures uh, Minimum Metacognitive Architecture for Implicit Motor Adaptation. Please. Sean? Okay, my name is Jun Izawa from University of Tsukuba. So uh, today I would like to talk about uh, meta learning of motor learning. Uh, and the title of this talk is uh, Meta Learning Structure, the Minimal Metacognitive Architecture for Implicit Motor Adaptation. So I use the word metacognition. Maybe this is overstatement. Uh, later we can discuss about uh, how meta learning of the motor learning could be a metacognitive part of the metacognitive system. So, uh, uh, so I am a motor control scientist. Uh, that's a computational uh, modeling of uh, motor control uh, from the aspect of uh, using a knowledge of the engineering and the robotics. So it's very different. It's like a kind of elemental level uh, in uh, general neuroscience. And uh, so I, I hope you still uh, enjoy uh, this kind of the study. So this is uh, the setting. Uh, let's see. Can you see that? So uh, this is a typical uh, setting of the experiment for motor control study, uh, where subject is asked to manipulate uh, something like a, uh, using a pen tablet uh, to draw the line or controlling a castle. But uh, the hand is typically occluded by the mirror or screen. And uh, in instead of uh, seeing the actual hand position, uh, subject see projected hand position from the monitor. Okay. And in this experiment, uh, subject is asked to reach uh, to the target uh, to be straight okay. here. Okay. Here. And uh, the Computer screen uh, project is the line. So task is drawing the line. But uh, sometimes, uh, unbeknownst to the subject, uh, this line is tilted a uh, little bit. Okay? And uh, interestingly, uh, subject unconsciously change the reach direction so that they correct this tilted uh, line to be straight. Okay? And after uh, you know, subject learn to compensate this part of vision, uh, subject is asked to report where their actual uh, hand position is. Okay, and even though they compensated uh, such a part of vision imperfect, uh, they they uh, didn't notice uh, about the correction of the movement. Okay. So this is uh, evidence that uh, motor learning and motor adaptation is implicit system, okay? mediated by implicit process. So this is a similar paper uh, that reported that uh, our motor learning system is implicit. And this is another important paper. So now uh, the same type of the visual motor rotation task, okay? uh, subject is asked us to reach to the target. Okay? So H indicates actual hand position, C indicates the projected castle. And during the learning trial, uh, castle is rotated to a uh, counter counterclockwise direction. Okay. Here. Right? Okay. And if when subject explains this counterclockwise uh, rotation, okay, the their reach movement exhibits uh, this error. Okay. But by repeating the same trial again and again, this error is reduced. Okay? So this is a motor adaptation. Okay? And suddenly, uh, this uh, rotation is uh, turned off. So they, their, uh, their causal movement exhibits this large after effect. This indicates uh, amount of the adaptation. Okay? And return back to the zero uh, uh, via washout. Okay? So in this experiment, uh, after the, uh, another in the another group of the subject, subject, uh, subject is asked after uh, this rotation was imposed, 
subject, subject is asked us to aim, explicit to aim, next target. Yeah. So that the cursor reach to the target. Okay. The performance now uh, is very well, perfect. So there is no need actually for them to learn. Okay. So uh, by using this explicit aiming strategy, a uh, subject can bring the cursor to be straight. Okay. But interestingly, repeating this trial again and again, uh, the error increases to the opposite direction. Okay. Like uh, uh, something like uh, overcompensation. Okay. And if, if uh, in the phase uh, four, uh, they are asked to, asked to stop using this uh, cognitive strategy to aim uh, this target so that uh, the castle is part of okay, to this counterclockwise direction, but there is a significant amount of the reduction of the error. So this indicates that even though a uh, subject uh, did a kind of perfect uh, motor control to reach to the target, hit the target, okay, implicit learning uh, is driven by, uh, driven automatically. Okay? They couldn't stop uh, doing, uh, they couldn't stop uh, adaptation. Okay? So this is other uh, evidence that our motor Adaptation is implicit system, okay? Even though the, if there is a conflict of the, uh, the cognitive strategy and the implicit motor adaptation, uh, they cannot uh, stop uh, implicit motor adaptation by this cognitive strategy. Okay. So that uh, the, uh, the model of the motor control use such a, a very simple uh, memory update model. So X is X represents memory of the motor control, which represent a kind of an estimate of the rotation or perturbation. And this update of the X is driven by sensory prediction error. So premise here is that uh, fundamental and the ultimate goal of a motor adaptation is error minimization. So we want to challenge this view. Uh, we challenged this view in this uh, paper published, published six months ago. Uh, and uh, we uh, derived a new uh, theory of uh, meta-learning of the motor learning by, uh, from the, um, which, is there, which is driven by a completely different uh, uh, computational principle. Right. So this question is also related to uh, neuroscientific question. Okay. So the uh, error minimization, people believe that the error minimization is mediated by the cellular balance. And uh, basal ganglia does some reward processing, like uh, reinforcement learning or decision making. Right. And uh, Peter Strick uh, uh, reported uh, some anatomical, in, uh, con anatomical uh, connection, projection uh, between cerebellum and basal ganglia uh, many times. And uh, in this uh, 2010 uh, paper, uh, review paper, he illustrated nicely that uh, these two uh, has um, you know, significant interaction, okay, connection uh, together. But uh, we do still do not know what's the, exact computational role of this interaction and connection. Okay. So how does a uh, reward system and how does, how does the reward system and the error system interact together? So this question is also discussed recently by Kostadinov in this review paper, uh, where the, uh, he pointed out that the massive connection between reward system and error system. And also he reported that uh, cerebral output neuron is modulated by reward signal. Okay. And the other group, Wagner, reported that a cerebral input neurons granular cell uh, predicts a future reward. Okay. So traditionally people believe that the cerebellum processes just a sensory prediction error okay, in order to change the motor command. However, recently, people reported such a uh, neurophysiological, neuro, neuro, neurophysiological evidence that uh, these 
cerebellum also uh, modulated by the reward signals. What's the role of this modulation? Okay, this is a neuroscientific question. So after reading this uh, Peter Strick's review paper, I uh, thought uh, some evidence, behavioral evidence of how uh, basal ganglia can interact with cerebellum by asking whether uh, only uh, reward information uh, can achieve motor learning. Okay, so I developed, it's more than 10 years ago, so I developed this uh, motor uh, learning paradigm. So this is a similar type of the visual motor rotation task that I have just introduced, where a subject is asked to reach the target position, okay? And the uh, position of the castle is rotated a little bit, okay? However, in this specific experiment, I uh, occluded the castle movement, okay? Here, okay? And then only information that subject can use is success or failure of this reaching movement, which is about whether subject reached to the target or not. If subject castle hit to the target, target uh, we showed some little animation about the exploration of the target. Okay? And then uh, subject can exchange this uh, accumulation of the score, okay? success or failure, later after the experiment uh, to the money. So we call this as the reward uh, feedback, and uh, we call this paradigm as the reward-based motor learning paradigm. So surprisingly, uh, subject is able to adapt their movement only with these reward signals, but a very different way. So you know, so we can see that uh, subject change reach direction gradually as uh, the reward region or castle is shifted. Okay, so. However, they exhibited large variability in reaching movement. So he explored uh, the, re, uh, the reward, he explored the motor command, which uh, can generate a large reward probability. Okay. And uh, subsequently, uh, we did a similar experiment on uh, Parkinson disease patient. And we found that the Parkinson disease patient significantly uh, uh, reduced uh, this uh, modulation effect of the exploration noise uh, uh, in response to change of the direction of the reward. Okay. And also uh, in this paper, the first paper of this reward-based learning, uh, the quality of the memory is quite different between the reward-based learning and the error-based learning. So even after subject adapt to change motor command to maximize a reward uh, probability, uh, they, uh, could, they uh, couldn't, okay. Then later we asked the subjects to uh, indicate where the hand position is. In the error-based learning paradigm, they sh shifted this perception of the hand position as a result of this adaptation. But such a adaptation of the kind of internal core model or perception of the hand uh, cannot be seen in reward-based learning uh, group. Also, some generalization function over target position about how much uh, they change the reach angle was drastically different okay, between error-based learning and reward-based learning paradigm. So this indicates that reward information and reward uh, error information uh, 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 seems to be uh, mediated by different neural structures, okay, which has a uh, complete, it, it seems these two learning problems in, engage the different uh, neural mechanisms. Okay. Also, uh, some following up study suggests that in the reward-based motor learning paradigm, uh, people rely on explicit uh, aiming strategy, not a motor adaptation, okay. implicit motor adaptation. So, uh, it seems that uh, uh, the cerebellum and the basal ganglia, uh, cerebellum which processes error and the basal ganglia which processes the reward is working together for motor learning, but in parallel, okay? So reward-based learning paradigm engages some different me uh, memory of the motor control okay? uh, than the error-based learning paradigm. And uh, this idea was uh, discussed recently by Kostedinov's uh, review paper, 
uh, where he said that uh, reward-based learning, reward-based exploration is engaged in early phase of the adaptation. And later, uh, people rely on uh, motor adaptation, error-based motor adaptation in order to fine tune uh, their motor movement okay, in order to maximize uh, you know, success probability. So still, uh, the question is remaining, how does the basal ganglia collaborate with the cerebellum during motor learning? Is there a tight coupling between these two systems? Okay. So there are clue in reported behavioral uh, uh, evidence of during a, uh, a motor adaptation. Okay. For example, this Hardfeld uh, paper in Science 2015 uh, reported that so learning, um, so uh, efficacy of the learning, which is captured by error sensitivity or learning rate is modulated by environment, uh, some condition of the environment. For example, when volatility okay, of the perturbation, so uh, this one uh, indicates the direction of the perturbation. Okay? In the low volatile condition, uh, uh, learning rate increases over blocks, okay? Whereas in high volatile condition, if perturbation, uh, direction of the perturbation switches very often, learning speed decreases over blocks, okay? Also, in this experiment, when target information is cramped, okay, sorry, so in normal condition, uh, people exhibit acceleration of the learning. Acceler uh, learning is faster in the second block here, second block here, than the first block, okay? So learning is accelerated, but such a learning acceleration was, uh, uh, was suppressed when uh, they uh, clamped uh, target error information, okay? So they jumped to target to target to the direction of the castle so that uh, people cannot feel uh, the target error associated with target, okay? And also they randomized this target error and then people didn't show such acceleration of the learning. And this acceleration of the learning is evident when uh, punishment information regarding uh, monetary feedback, okay? Subtracting of money is combined is with uh, uh, error information. Uh, so people exhibit uh, acceleration of the learning okay. here. But uh, such acceleration was not seen with a reward feedback and the random positive feedback. So what is a unified uh, computational model that can explain these acceleration of the learning or deceleration of the learning? Good question. Okay. So the hint uh, was from uh, uh, machine learning theory. In machine learning field, recently people developed ex extensively about uh, meta-learning algorithm. For example, when I, when I was a grad student, okay, and when I tried to let a neural network to learn, I needed to moderate, you know, tune the parameter by myself. So by developing such a scale, I think I got a PhD in the end. But so, you know, people share the same question. You know, so, uh, uh, so people developed, uh, Automatic people developed, uh, you know, algorithm automatically uh, developed, uh, uh, really, <laughs> uh, automatically developed, uh, 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 automatically tuned the parameter. Like, for example, in this case, speed of the adaptation was uh, increased over, over trials, over blocks. And uh, this was uh, inspired by, you know, animals meta-learning like this, okay? And uh, recently people developed, uh, com you know, this, you know, people developed a computational model of the meta-learning uh, where uh, the learning speed is modulated by environmental volatility. And uh, so you know, there are lots of the different uh, algorithms in uh, meta-learning, however, uh, most, uh, most of them share the same structure. So there are nested structure okay, of the learning system where uh, in a loop of the reward maximization loop okay, is characterized by some meta-parameter theta 
which is also optimized by outer loop of the uh, meta learning loop. Okay, and I came up the idea that uh, we we change we replace this uh, inner loop reinforcement learning algorithm by error minimization motor learning algorithm. Okay, so. You know, so in educational psychology, such a nested loop is important for uh, meta learning or learning to learn, which is a uh, part of the meta uh, cognition, where uh, brain monitor cognition and evaluate it and uh, making a plan how to use, how to change it. So I developed uh, the theory by very simple assumption where memory is updated by a memory update command U. And uh, so U in the memory space is generated by policy pi, okay? And uh, assuming that ultimate goal of a motor learning is maximization of the reward, we developed this uh, meta learning loop. And assuming that uh, we have very li simple linear uh, motor learning, uh, uh, linear motor policy, we can develop a simple uh, memory update loop like this. Okay. Uh, memory is updated by error and the noise. And uh, the parameter, meta parameter, with, uh, retention rate and the running rate uh, can be updated by uh, this loop. Okay. Okay. So where, uh, for example, uh, acceleration of the learning, beta learning rate is updated by integration of the previous uh, memory noise and uh, reward, which is a result of the memory update and error, okay? And a similar update rule can be uh, derived by, uh, derived for uh, retention, okay? And this uh, equation is very similar to previously reported update rule of uh, speed of uh, motor learning uh, beta, which is mainly driven by only error, okay? Or when Schoegel-Kohl's group up, uh, derive, uh, proposed that uh, some meta parameter is updated by reward. So we, I derived, uh, so I, my, I, I, derived uh, this update rule of the beta, okay, which, has, which is updated by the integration with the reward and the error. So, so, so that it's, 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 it's like a, uh, my proposal is just a minor extension of the previous two models. However, this is really suggestive because if uh, meta learning for motor learning exists, in uh, human brain, uh, in human behavior, that suggests that there is a massive and functional uh, interaction between reward system and the error system, which suggests the interaction between basal ganglia and the cerebellum. Okay, so uh, here is a behavior experiment uh, doing a similar type of visual motor rotation task okay, by using this robot manipulandum and uh, subject uh, castle movement is rotated. So task is to compensate this uh, rotation. And uh, so I developed a meta learning training task uh, where in the first trial, we inserted the, this perturbation in order to introduce this uh, error. And then we suppose that the memory is updated. And uh, in the next trial, subsequent next trial, uh, we subject exhibit after effect. Okay, we capture this after effect and compute the reward and giving a score to the subject. And uh, we ask subject to maximize this score, but uh, we devise the two uh, reward function, one called promote increases the score as learning progresses, but the suppress group uh, uh, shows a reduction of the score when uh, learning is uh, promoted. Okay, so this is a simulation result and that shows that uh, uh, over blocks, uh, the learning rate increases in promote group, uh, whereas uh, the learning is suppressed in uh, suppressed group. Okay. And uh, here is the result of this experiment. Okay, in the first block, uh, this speed of the learning, okay, the slope, Okay, here 
of the suppress group and the promote are almost the same. However, after repeating this meta-learning training task, uh, it's, each group exhibit a very different culture in this uh, update of the memory. And uh, we estimated uh, learning rate by using this model and the learning rate is increased in promote and the suppressed in suppressed group. And the retention rate is also uh, not, not, not increased, but consistent, uh, but uh, suppressed group uh, retention rate was reduced. Okay, let's skip. So uh, we showed, and also uh, score was increased over blocks, okay, uh, for both group. So this indicates that the human subject meta learn, okay, in order to maximize or minimize punishment, okay, in this case. So uh, here, uh, we subtracted some score, okay, from the baseline, uh, depending on this uh, learning uh, score function, okay. And uh, so it shows this meta learning. So this meta-learning effect is drastically reduced when uh, we provided a reward instead of punishment, okay? So now score is positive, okay? And the subject didn't, subject show a small meta-learning uh, effect here, okay? And the increase of the score is uh, not so evident, okay? So, uh, the reward condition and the uh, punishment condition uh, uh, significantly uh, gives a uh, different, uh, different impact on meta learning. So we estimated this efficacy of the meta learning okay, for reward condition and punishment condition. And we found that uh, this efficacy of the meta learning is different between punishment and reward in retention rate uh, reward is uh, reward affects more than the punishment, but in the learning rate, for the learning rate, punishment influence is larger than reward. Okay. And uh, so our model is able to explain previously reported effect of the volatility and this target uh, effect and a monetary feedback effect. Okay. And uh, my model outperforms uh, to other previously recently reported models, right? So interestingly, uh, so the parameter that I tuned in order to replicate uh, this motivational effect, okay, punishment effect and reward effect is the same, was similar to what I estimated in this reward, uh, this meta-learning uh, paradigm. So such an asymmetry between punishment and reward is a kind of significant feature of this human meta-learning. Okay. And uh, so this might be related to uh, Pavlovian effect versus instrumental effect in uh, go and no-go task uh, by uh, Peter Dian's group. Okay. So if you look at this data, this indicates probability of the goal over trial, okay? And the people learn uh, uh, increasing uh, success of uh, this goal and no goal task and by uh, receiving a reward information. And uh, this probability goal is large uh, for win uh, in addition to this effect of the adaptation comparing to uh, avoiding a punishment effect. So it seems that there is a bias effect uh, by this reward and the punishment in this uh, 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 go and no go task, which is modeled by uh, such a you know, value uh, bias, which is called uh, Pavlovian effect. Okay. So also uh, such uh, asymmetry can be explained by uh, Kahneman's uh, prospect of theory. Okay. And it seems that uh, this meta-learning rate okay, regarding a retention, memory retention, is influenced larger by uh, such a uh, uh, Pavlovian effect, whereas learning rate is influenced by such an asymmetry 
between uh, punishment and uh, loss and gain uh, regarding a value described by this prospect prospect theory. So okay, uh, so uh, here I propose a normative model of the meta learning, and uh, it monitors learning outcome association in order to uh, regulate uh, learning efficacy. Okay. So this is the kind of the first empirical evidence that meta-learning system exists in human brain uh, during a motor, motor learning, uh, which suggests uh, interaction between reward and the error system. Okay. And I said that uh, central dogma of this field is error minimization, but why do we need to minimize error? So we show that error, error minimization principle is true only when it is linked is either maximizing reward or minimizing punishment. Okay. And, but a neural basis of meta learning remains open question, but uh, such uh, asymmetry uh, between reward and punishment, punishment might be a clue to understand such a neural basis. So uh, here's the open question. So uh, the proposed uh, meta learning model uh, into this structure of monitoring uh, motor learning and controlling a parameter of uh, motor learning. So there is a, uh, you know, a meta level and object level, uh, which is similar uh, geo uh, uh, geometrically uh, to the uh, you know, metacognitive system for more general uh, uh, tasks, like a verbal learning or decision making. Uh, which include, for example, in the case of the verbal learning, judge of the, the judgment of the learning and the feeding of the learning can be observed by meta level. And, uh, you know, uh, object level of the verbal learning is, co is controlled uh, via cognitive control or changing a strategy of learning. But these things is probably processed in the, everything is explicit level. Right? But what I so today is, uh, you know, uh, meta learning for implicit motor learning. So there is some cognitive system, okay, which manipulate uh, implicit learning system, okay, uh, observing, you know, state of uh, implicit learning and controlling a meta parameter. But still, we don't know. Oh. Ah. You know, it could be everything should be uh, process in implicit level. Okay. So, you know, the definition of the metacognition is uh, kind of difficult. However, meta learnings manifest a part of the metacognition, but uh, we still don't know uh, what, uh, you know, cognitive structure of it. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Um... Comments, questions? So thank you very much for your great talk. So uh, I also working on so, you know uh, set alarms. And uh, my question is, uh, you're talking about the uh, connection between the Bansan ganglia and the set alarms. And you also introduced the kinds of meta learnings. But uh, it's still not clear to me then uh, how you know the several arms and the bank cell Galia can implement that kind of meta learning algorithms. You have any uh, you know hint for that? Right. Uh, that's uh, of course important question. Uh, but of course we don't know uh, because uh, this is really you know uh, a, a fast study uh, that. Uh, by which uh, we found uh, such a computational structure and some uh, behavioral evidence. However, uh, maybe fast one. All right. So, uh, ha ha however, assuming that reinforcement learning is mediated by basal ganglia and uh, uh, motor learning is mediated by cerebellum. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, um, typically people think that uh, cerebellum uh, predict uh, sensory outcomes as a response to, uh, you know, made motor 
action. However, um, we could uh, argue that um, you know this motor learning part uh, represents some policy of how uh, people update the motor command, okay, and as a response to observed error, okay, and assuming that uh, uh, object level maybe cerebellum uh, uh, represents such a uh, mod, uh, memory update policy, okay, uh, reinforcement learning uh, uh, update. Uh, parameters okay, that characterize uh, motor update policy, motor memory update policy. So there must be interaction uh, between cerebellum and the uh, basal ganglia, uh, where uh, the basal ganglia have to somehow update uh, the parameter of the uh, uh, memory update policy by receiving, uh, by observing a current memory error and uh, uh, reward outcome, which is a variation of the uh, memory update. Because, uh, in our recent papers, we all analyze the kinds of go and no go uh, tasks in RAT, and uh, we found that uh, we found a kind of several activities, uh, complex spice, mm. is highly correlated with reward. Mm. And so we, based on that observations, we hypothesis that maybe uh, the cerebellum and panza ganglia, maybe also the cortex, maybe mm. work at a whole as a case of reinforced learning, modular reinforced learning. Mm. And each uh, modular may work for each case of, for example, go or no go, where cerebellum acts maybe be a case of actor when it receives an uh, error from panza ganglia to correct the command. So that may, maybe that's it. Of course, it's just a hypothesis, but I'm very, very interesting if we can find some. I, I, I think that uh, um, I, we are sharing mostly this yeah, similar yeah, yeah. Uh, architecture yeah. and the view about the uh, uh, cerebellum. Yeah, and the yeah. Cerebellum. yeah. Interesting, okay. thank you very much. Thank you. Any other question, comment? Yeah, I was uh, uh, really like this uh, um, this work, but I was wondering if uh, um, so you you mentioned at the very end is all I think still speculative whether any of these processes are explicit in the sense that they might require um, consciousness or mm -hmm. any conscious access to that uh, or any conscious sort of monitoring. Uh, do you think that would depend? So we also know that for sort of visual motor action. All of this can happen entirely uh, below consciousness for, for learning and so on. Uh, but do you think that for other tasks that also involve maybe not motor learning, but still sort of meta reinforcement learning uh, in which the complexity is high, would you require, would you think that in that case, the balance of implicit explicit uh, might change? Yes, I think so. Yes, I think so. Um, right, right. So I, I think that the, probably I think that you have uh, same, some relevant question in your probably study, but uh, actually I don't know uh, such a relationship between you know explicit and uh, implicit in the context of the study of the metacognition, which should be very important and interesting question. But um, so far I think uh, most of the study, for example, including uh, perceptual, I don't know. Metacognitive judgment task about the decision making. Uh, people suppose that everything is conducted in or processed in uh, explicit level, but uh, I, I I don't know if it is right or not because when we're thinking of the perceptual decision making, you know, um, in some implicit process about the perception might imp influence the metacognitive part as well. So such uh, I think uh, study. Uh, such a direction of the study is important to promote this area, you know, new direction of the research of the metacognition. Yeah. And so in, in, in your experiment, did participants receive any um, instructions as to uh, for strategies and so on? Mm, uh, so, so they didn't uh, receive any explicit uh, strategy. So instruction is uh, simple enough. Just, uh, for example, you know, uh, 
you know, uh, you can you, you need to reach, and uh, you know, the you can exchange the point later to the money, and uh, your job is to maximizing or minimizing punishment, maximizing uh, you know, money, monetary feedback. Uh, simple and also importantly, perturbation is quite small, five five degrees. So it is hard to notice uh, su such a change in the environment. Okay, yeah. Do, do, do you think that you would see the same pattern of meta learning if you if you would tell participants, you know, to use an explicit strategy as the I think the the study by uh, right Howard, right, uh, in which so... you have that implicit learning that actually overrides the explicit strategy. If that would also change your uh, balance of uh, learning and meta learning. So 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 yeah. So uh, we didn't we didn't have uh, you know uh, enough. Uh, uh, set of the data to report, but we did that experiment, and uh, people overcompensate, and uh, but still people show uh, the same the similar extent of the meta learning effect, uh, uh, similar to uh, the people who receive uh, implicit just the implicit uh, instruction. Well, thank you. Thank you. Do you have any other? Question comment and how about the two? Okay. Uh, very interesting. And um, thank you very much. And you you, you prefaced your talk about the, this idea of metacognition as a very in a low level sense and motive level sense. How do you envisage this uh progressing to more uh um more traditional notion of metacognition in cognitive psychology, for example. Uh, so in right, cognitive psychology, right, 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 right. I have I things think, called. Yeah, like... I think that uh, this is the thing that I am actually started to do, uh, work. For mm -hmm. example, maybe we can ask, we can, you know, we can do the research about, for example, uh, judgment of the learning task about such implicit adaptation, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, somehow, you know, uh, like a you know, we can we can we can use similar framework of, for example, evaluating metacognitive efficacy, mm -hmm. like a meta D or you know meta ratio, uh, in uh, in order to assess how people can uh, recognize or co maybe control uh, implicit uh, motor adaptation. Mm -hmm. But it, there is no established way, and um, I, I I think nobody. Have worked on such a direction. Mm. So, so uh, I guess my, my general point is that what you're doing at the motor level has a parallel of what normal cognitive psychologists would do when they do study things like that, uh, analogy and induct and uh, induction in sort of more higher level tasks with it with it stimulating a more abstract. Mm. So I was I'm interested to see how this your stuff can connect. So for example, in the what more People like who, who work in sort of relational pros, uh, um, uh, analogical reasoning, like um, Dedrick Entner and Keith Holyoke, and a lot of people in this area. But the more crucial, but I mean, there is, of course, a neurological difference. In the kind of parts of the brain that they're interested in, are like prefrontal cortex, and how it interacts. Right. right. But um, so I'm wondering whether the, what you're doing can be extended in some way. For the so in, in, in the kinds of tasks that they would do, they'd be very abstract stimuli, mm -hmm. but the the stimuli would have some sort of a relational pattern, and so you you change the stimuli, but the pattern the underlying structure stays the same, and then you you can show the kind of learning learning to learning learning right. transfer. Mm -hmm. right, um, so right. stuff that you, you mentioned, Harlow, but you know, yeah, of course, it is people go. It's very likely that I think a neural substrate is different between you know cognitive task. You know, metacognition of the cognitive task and mm. the metacognition of such an implicit task. Mm. But I would like to find some, you know, some minimal structure mm. uh, that can uh, that can achieve, uh, you know, metaco metacognitive uh, control of some process. Mm. So, and uh, you know, if we found such a minimum structure called minimal. Uh, metacognitive system. Maybe you know we can apply it for animal study or you know uh, any other kind of uh, even human I think, mm -hmm. uh, some implicit cognitive system. Mm -hmm. So finding a minimal structure 
which can which was modeled by reinforcement learning today. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, such I think uh, direction is important. Mm -hmm. So there must be some generality, but neural substrates could be different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why I was interested in the way you're yeah. doing it and how it could be possibly connected to this. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah quite important question. O open, open question. And I'm also wondering why you choose the terms implicit and explicit when computationally it's really just the, the, the more important difference seems to be the way that you've set up the theory. Uh, as in the parameter versus the meta parameter, because in again in cognitive psychology, the term implicit and explicit, or this notion of system one versus system two, often gets hard to. Good, different people have different conceptions of the no, of the notion of implicit versus explicit, where the the theory that you already gave seemed to be a bit. Well, sorry, what, what's your indication? So, uh, it possible. Uh, could I could I could I use different framework like a system system one? Well, I think three? when people start to use terms like informal terms like I mean the theory is the, the theory that you've got seems to be clear enough uh -huh. so why impose uh, some very uh, unclear terms like implicit well not unclear uh, but in in cognitive psychology people use the term implicit explicit in various different ways it just seems to cloud and unnecessarily cloud the issue where the theory that you already had seemed to be quite nice <laughs> Well, well, well I, I think that uh, one of the reason, uh, of course, I think that, uh, yeah, no matter how I call, I think that uh, how people can recognize uh, implicit motor learning is, it's it, this concept itself has a contradiction. That's why it was interesting to me. Mm -hmm. how, 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 uh, but uh, the other more practical reason is that in this field, people started to focus on explicitness or contribution of the exp explicitness, calling it as explicit aiming or explicit strategy. And mm -hmm. people believe that uh, implicit learning and explicit uh, strategy are independent, doesn't, doesn't interact together. Mm -hmm. That's what I showed, mm -hmm. I think, in the introduction. But this is like a challenge to that view, conventional view. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so, uh, so, you know, I, I, I propose that, you know, this is not the case in more general case. Mm -hmm. So when you say explicit, uh, in your context, uh -huh. uh, what you mean? Do you explicitly give the subject some instruction that say that you have to do it this I, way? I, I, yeah, so it's a difficult question to me because I'm motor motor control scientist. But I think that uh, for uh, explicitness in this context is whether people can barbarize, you know, uh, what is happening and right. what is the strategy that they right. adopted, or right. you know, barbarize. Uh, whether they learned some, you know, you know, for example, everything is explicit, probably, if I can recognize, you know, extent of the learning, extent of the memory update. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it, if it has to, if, if there needs to be some sort of linguistic component introduced to characterize the notion of explicit and you sort of rule out the possibility of doing this with animals. So again, I, I, I like the theory uh, and I wonder whether the, the attempt to introduce these uh, other terms is really... Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is the question that I have had actually. Yeah. I, I don't have an exact answer. But I mean, I, I like what you've done, yes. And I would like to see how I could use this, uh -huh. <laughs> this kind of uh -huh. approach. Because the, I mean, in cognitive psychology, we have the same kind of issue with um, learning transfer, mm. um, but the the tasks are a little bit more difficult um, and more right. abstract too. They're not motor tasks per se, right. but usually just, for example, um, in some kind of um, uh, conditional discrimination task where you give uh, the subjects have two like a color shape, uh -huh. and they they, ha they have to predict a yes no response. And once they do that, then you can change the, the stimuli completely, but the conditional discrimination structure still remains the same. And then you look at how quickly they ch you have this learning transfer effect too. You know, the first few trials, tri like in the Harlow study, but the difference in, right. in there is not how quickly you learn the task, but how, how many novel, how much, how many times you can predict the novel task that they've never, the novel stimuli that they've never predicted before. That's, I think, that kind of meta memory or feeling of no 
uh, judgment of knowing the task? Well, you don't know. um, so, I, I don't want to use up all your time, but yeah, I, I really think it's quite fascinating. I, I hadn't seen it this, done this way. But, yeah. So, what, uh, yeah, most of the such a cognitive task involves such a verbal report, and, uh, you know, it's for subjects to be explicit. Why um, are solving uh, the lower level of the task, object level of the task? Well, you could just you could just do it as a prediction task, right? And say so you give a, a particular two colors and two shapes, and you ask them to predict the response and say, say a left right response, and you keep doing that until they get it right, and then you completely change the colors and the shapes, and you do it again. Oh. And but the key point then is uh, if they really understood the structure, after they get the first trial of the new color, they should be able to predict the remaining three, for example, without. Uh, um, and you can you can do that without having to oh. just as a prediction task. Oh. But the, the key point there is oh. that um, the stimuli themselves have no uh, relationship beyond their relations. Actually, it's a bit similar to what now is talking about the similarity between similarity. So the the stimuli themselves don't have any intrinsic meaning. It's only their relationship between the other stimuli that has the meaning. So I, I don't have a clear answer to you, your question. However, you know the the example that I example that I introduced today is uh, just one, really one example of metacognition mm -hmm. of a motor control. For example, maybe changing uh, changing a volatility of the environment. Maybe we could ask uh, perception of the level of the uh, uncertainty, which probably uh, often asked in the previous uh, cognitive tasks, mm -hmm. like what you said. So uh, lots of, I think, uh, mm -hmm. things that we can do uh, via this, uh, you know, motor learning studies. Yeah. Right, thank you. Thank you. Very good. Good no question, comment? Yeah, I think, yeah. Thank you, Aizawa-sensei. Thank you very much.